when someone says what do you do of those instances if you continue digging and you find a buddhist place i would say aur thoda khudai kar lo aapko wahan pe fir ek mandir dikh jayega if you look at how the weaponization of buddhism against uh, the vedic religion has been orchestrated significantly there are two things that i think the british period successfully did every uh, panth uh, whether it was astik or nastik was always presented in reference to what they call the brahmanical religion one way or the other hmm. okay so therefore they would see buddhism jainism and sikhism as egalitarian casteless deviations and departures or even revolts against brahmanical orthodoxy that was their way of looking at it the problem with this entire historiography is one buddha is crystal clear in his belief as far as varna vyavastha is concerned hmm. he himself says that the next person to lead the sangha will be a kshatriya so much so because he comes from a kshatriya kula yeah he chastises women for having intermarried in different castes he chides them for this yeah so where is this casteless notion of buddhism coming from is something that we have to ask ourselves second as vikram rightly says they may reject the veda as the primary pramana as far as their belief system is concerned but the rest of the values of hindu philosophy which are traceable to the vedic religion significantly are taken over that is actually true of most movements across the world wherein you will see communism and let's say protestant movements taking christian values rejecting only the establishment of the catholic church hmm. that happens every other in every other society now why is this crucial that there is no scriptural animosity that is taught as part of the faith systems but remember one thing the contestation between different pants dharmic pants so to speak was virulent with respect to who believes that who is right language actually would defeat every provision of the indian penal code today in the way they refer to themselves okay. abuses are hurled freely nobody in the family is spared okay left right and center it goes mm-hmm. but the thing is that is the extent to which the, fa- the society has been tolerant where the ideas are so dearly held that they contest very very vociferously mm-hmm. now what has not happened at least as a result of scriptural sanction as he rightly says is destruction of the other place of worship hmm. now when someone says what do you do of those instances if you continue digging and you find a buddhist place i would say aur thoda khudai kar lo aapko wahan pe fir ek mandir dikh jayega bas ek level baki hai you know why hmm. one of the first let's say temple destructions which was ordered in the history of bharat way before the islamic invader came was by certain radical buddhist missionaries okay that is a fact so when someone says you will find something then i said theek hai you let's go take it to the logical conclusion go a step further no problem let's see where this goes okay assume for a moment at the core of it you find only a buddhist stupa please take it no problem hindu okay. mind will accept it because we are for the truth very clear second the weaponization of buddhist history starts around the ram janmabhoomi movement by scholars like arash sharma dn ja irfan habib so on and so forth because they are hell bent on actually stifling your claim by putting up another claim yeah. now you'll you'll get a concrete example and you'll be able to relate it to now nobody gives a damn about hindu diversity until the uniform civil code is brought about yeah <laughs> until the conversation starts they will say are there is so much of diversity within you what will happen to the tribal in assam what will happen to the tribal in nagaland and arunachal pradesh suddenly all sorts of people who never care about them start talking for their voices because one is used to defeat the other argument that is exactly the strategy behind the propping up of the buddhist argument in so far as our claims are concerned i've said this before they came to the court with a petition specifically saying that even sabarimala temple is a buddhist temple when the arguments are going on in the supreme court tirupati also tirupati yeah. every temple for that matter hmm. okay so i am saying if you're so keen on presenting your case why can't you stand on your own two feet why is it that you suddenly come as a plant only when the hindu chooses to assert his claim that is mighty convenient mm-hmm. which is why the history and the politics of history is something that most people don't understand unfortunately some of our own people don't understand because they constantly say are are you dig deeper you'll find something there don't do it nothing of that sort should be done limit your claims to only three sorry no mm-hmm. if you have the confidence and you believe in history then this can't be compromised